So guess what I finally watched? That's right, I finally binge-watched Stranger Things, the new Netflix original series that everyone's been talking about. Yep, I finally sat down and just binge-watched it. It also helped that it was only eight, eight episodes long, so... <laughs> it wasn't too long of a, of a chore, really. It wasn't that long of a, you know, marathon, and I could easily do it. Rather than, you know, with Daredevil, <laughs> it was like a straight, you know, Daredevil and Jessica Jones, where it's like 13 episodes, so it's like, thir you really have to dedicate yourself to 13 hours of just straight-up Daredevil. <laughs> so, yeah, that was kind of the thing, is that, yeah, eight, I, could, I could spare eight hours of my life to, you know, total binge-watch this show. And let me say that this, like, I was kind of worried about this because everyone was saying, oh, you gotta watch um, Stranger Things, you gotta watch Stranger Things. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you, um, when you basically, here's something I, I just don't really care much for. When someone says, you gotta do this, you gotta do this, and everyone starts saying, you gotta do this, you gotta do this, it makes me not want to do this. So, when everyone was saying, hey, go watch Stranger Things, I was borderline going to go, no, because then it's going to feel like a chore, and I don't want to do that. I really don't want to feel like it's a chore, and I really don't want to do that. <laughs> but nope, I sat down, I watched it, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, this was a lot of fun. Um, I think, yeah... The, the show is set... If for those who don't know, who are unaware, and I am going to keep spoilers out of this, I might do minor spoilers at best for this. Yeah, I might just do minor spoilers at best, but I don't want to... Because this show is still relatively new. It's only been out, what, a month? Less than a month? So, for those who have not watched it, I am going to be... You know, I am only going to do minor spoilers. I don't want to spoil anything major. So, the series is set in 1983, and it centers around the disappearance of a boy named Will, uh, Will Breyer. Yeah, Will, Bri uh, Will Briers, who his, um, the town basically, you know, his mother's convinced that he's still out there, his friends are convinced they're still out there, and they've encountered a young girl who has psychic powers, uh, and it leads to a whole big conspiracy. Um, this big conspiracy involving alternate universes and monsters. Seriously, if you have, like, a, if you're still feeling withdrawals from Gravity Falls ending, and you didn't, and, and Dead of Summer did jack shit for you like it did me... I'm sorry, I just... God, oh, God, Dead of Summer. Oh, I just don't give... A, I just do not give a single shit about that show. Oh, man. If, you, if anyone out there watching Dead of Summer enjoys the show, if anyone enjoys Dead of Summer, um, that's totally fine. I just did not care for... Like, the first... Like, first off, it shouldn't take a, a series to take five episodes in a ten-episode... What was it? This half of the season? Just go, oh, something's really wrong here. Something's really strange. Yeah. It shouldn't take five episodes for make everyone... Uh, to actually have the show finally pick up and get going. Anyway, I'm ranting. Um, but yeah, Dead of Summer was just not for me, and I thought that it could... Even with Tony Todd in that show, it couldn't help. Anyway... <laughs> Um, sorry, I'm sorry. I, 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 again, if you enjoy Dead of Summer, that's totally fine. No ill will against you. I just did not care for it at all. Just in no way did I care for it. Um, so yeah, the series does follow around this big conspiracy. And like I said, if you have, like, your... If you're still having, like, withdrawals from Gravity Falls, Stranger Things is definitely gonna have that... Is gonna, is gonna give you that fix. It's gonna give you that, you know, big mystery kind of fix. It's, it's definitely gonna give you that. Um, also, I really dig, um, here's some Stranger Things fan art, which, again, I found on the internet, and I can't find the, um, the artist for this, which I wish I could give credit for again, because this is great. This is, if you really enjoy 80s shows, and it's really hard to do an 80s show, because here's something that Stranger Things does better than, than Dead of Summer once again. It actually feels like an 80s show, rather than being like, oh, it's the 80s, that's what we all looked like, that's what we all dressed like. It's in the 80s, but it's not, you know, it just feels like, rather than be like, oh, we're, it's a big 80s thing, it actually feels like, yeah, this is just the time period it's set in. Whereas the other show, the uh, Dead of Summer is in 1989, this is 1983, so early 80s. I get, yeah, Return of the Jedi is probably, so yeah, that's Return of the Jedi is probably come out by this point, or about to come out at this point. And this is how I, I, I date the, this is how I date the 80s people, um, <laughs> by how much Star Wars had come out by that time. Um, anyway, 
So the two biggest actors for me, the children actors, let me talk about the children actors real quick. The children actors were all really good. Um, they were all really fantastic. They all had some, gr you know, they had some great lines. And, you know, this is, it really takes place, it really does feel like I'm watching a sequel, a TV series of The Goonies at some point. It does feel like, you know, the best way to describe Stranger Things is if Gravity Falls and The Goonies had a baby. That's the best way to to, to kind of describe it, I guess. If you know, if I could, Gravity Falls meets the Goonies. That's the best way to describe um, Stranger Things, I guess. Um, anyway, so the show, um, the the young actors in here are all really great. Um, they all have some great chemistry. And the thing is, like, you really have, you know, when child actors are involved, you really have to sell it. And trust me, these kids sell it. Um, they just go through so many ranges of emotion. Um, but why not a writer in here? Why not a writer? Oh my God, she kills it as the desperate mother. You really feel that sense of urgent of urgentness. Is that even a word? I don't think so. That sense of urgency. There's the word. <laughs> I made up a word. Me not so smart. Um, <laughs> oh, that's been an off day. You can tell. Um, that sense of urge, you know, that sense of urgency and, you know, the need to find that one's, ch you know, find one's child. You, she really gives off this great performance throughout the entire season. She's just hands down amazing. And I actually thought, I didn't, if you didn't tell me that was my own writer, I'd have thought that was someone else. I didn't realize, I know, you know, I know the years, um, you know, age does, you know, age changes us, I'm aware of that. I didn't realize, um, you know, she. If you didn't tell me that was Winona Ryder, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have meant. I would have thought of it. You had to have told me. In the, they had to tell me. No, that's Winona Ryder. Seriously? <laughs> I mean, yeah, she really made herself look like an average mom. And we. Whenever you think Winona Ryder, for me, it's usually, of course, Beetlejuice or um, the character she played in. Oh yeah, Mina Harker in, in Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula adaptation. So. That's usually when I think that. I, yeah, that's when I usually think Winona Ryder, I think that. But now I'm thinking this as well. Another great act performance in here is David Harbour, who plays Officer Jim Hopper, who he really... I, I heard a rumor that this that this role was supposed to go to Clancy Brown. Originally, I heard this weird rumor, and I don't know how much of it is true or not, but I heard like it was originally supposed to go to Clancy Brown, but um, he either turned down the role or he was too busy for it. I don't know which, but yeah, Dan Harbour, who I'd seen a few, a few movies, I can't name him, but he plays a dick in every movie, and I thought he was going to play a dick in this show. He starts out as a dick, but he, then he turns out to be a total badass. Like, there are scenes in here where I'm like, man, this guy, like, I would not mind if he played, like, there's some moments where it feels like it's straight out of, like, Max Payne with him. Like, seriously. <laughs> I was like, did you just play Max Payne just to play, because there are some moments in here where it's like, huh. Look at that. <laughs> that was like straight out. I don't know why I'm referencing Max Payne, but it just felt like he, he was referencing that character, if that makes any sense at all. But no, Dan Harbour was just amazing in here. Him and Winona Ryder have great chemistry, and the whole plot, you, you clearly see that they're, um, you know, going on the edge of uh, total insanity here. And you see that, kind of, you know, that level of madness slowly just kind of consume them. But at the same time, they know they're right. And they know they're... It, it sounds crazy. And, yeah. So let's talk about the monster real quick. The monster is um, this faceless entity that comes from an alternate universe. And I like what they do with alternate universes of the whole, you know, calling it the upside down and having it like a positive negative kind of thing. And, you know, going back to the, how, you know, our original concept of alternate, er, er, alternate universes uh, stems from of this whole thing of, like, it, you know, our Earth is, like, the positive, and this alternate universe is, like, the negative on a photograph, in a way. They also had a really cool way of explaining it with a flea and an acrobat, and I was like, I never thought of it. Shit, I never thought about it like that, but that's kind of awesome. <laughs> anyway, so the series, so, um, the monster in question in here is a really cool design, and I think they were trying to go for, like, a, trying to make it, like, a more primal version of Slenderman, because again, it's like this faceless. I, I don't think I'm spoiling much here with the with the monster design. It's supposed to be like a faceless humanoid and very tall and very lanky type creature. And that's if you ever look at like internet memes and stuff, that's what Slenderman is supposed to look like. So I like how they took the Slenderman idea and it's how it's supposed to take people away without you even noticing, without you even knowing where they go. I was like, huh, 
They really change. It's it's a clear reference to Slender Man without it being Slender Man. And it, you really have to think on it's like, oh, tall, lanky thing. Oh, it's supposed to be Slender. It's supposed to be like a a like a monster. You know, more evil, ver- more monstrous version. There's the word. A more monstrous version of Slender Man. That's what they're trying to do. Okay, now I see what they're doing. Anyway, this is a just a great show, and it does live up to the hype, in my opinion. Because I was like, when I was going into this, I was like, man, this show is really overhyped. I feel like this show is really overhyped. Am I really gonna like it? I don't know if I'm gonna like it. It's so overhyped. I don't know if I'm gonna. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> oh man, and um. I know it's getting a second season. Apparently, yeah, it's going to get a second season, um, which I'm very excited for. And, yeah, I feel like this show has just been nothing short of just amazing. Um, I feel like it deserves the hype. The writing's really good. The atmosphere is really great. It really does pay homage to a lot of 80s horror without it being, like, throwing in your... Without it throwing in your face that, oh, look at us, we're referencing 80s horror. Look at that. We're so on... We're so great on the 80s. No, it shows you how great the 80s are without it be like, without it needing to throw in your face of how good the 80s were. You know, 80s horror and science fiction was. It doesn't need to, like obsessively do that every second. It just does it on its own. It doesn't need to do that. It just says, yeah, it's in the 80s, and here's horror. Here you go. Check it out. (laughs) Yeah. So, this show is just nothing short of spectacular, in my opinion. If you have not seen Stranger Things yet, if you have not um, checked this show out um, on Netflix, uh, I highly recommend it. Again, if you miss Gravity Falls, if you still miss Gravity Falls and um, you're trying to find something to do that mystery, you know, backwoods kind of horror um, uh, story, uh, storytelling, then look no further than Stranger Things. This is, if you miss, like I said, if you miss Gravity Falls, you're going to love Stranger Things. Um, there's even, like, one point in this show where it's like, is Bill Cipher going to show up? Because I feel like th- Bill Cipher would show up. <laughs> no, really, there's a moment in here, and you'll know the moment, and you'll be like, is, that, is Bill, is Bill going to show up? <laughs> there's also a great subtle reference to... There's some great subtle references to... Um, and I'll spoil this much. Um, there's a subtle, re- a few subtle references to uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. One being, and I'm pretty damn sure they did this on purpose, was one of the main characters is a character called Nancy, which, of course, Nancy, the main hero from Nightmare on Elm Street uh, 1 and 3. And there's another one... It's a little less on the nose, but it's it's really cool, and it's actually part of the plot. I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah. Um, Michael Morden's also in the show. I forgot to talk about him. He plays such a bastard. But then again, he pl- he kind of plays the asshole scientist in a lot of these TV shows. I, I expect nothing less from this guy. Um, this show... Man, I just can't... Um, I just can't stop talking about it because of just how... Just how great this is. Um, the, the, the show was created by the Duffer Brothers, who had done, um, apparently two other things called, um, they had written a movie called Wayward Pines, not, uh, oh, I guess, oh yeah, Wayward Pines, that's a Fox TV show, now I remember, and they wrote a few episodes of that, and they also directed a movie called Hidden, and now Stranger Things is the thing they're writing and directing, so, yeah, go them. If we ever, you know, I'd love to see these guys branch out and do more horror stuff, you know, with, um, you know, horror being a big thing coming back to TV, um, you know, with obviously uh, Scream and, you know, a lot of talks of um, CW doing, night, uh, you know, Friday the 13th as a TV show. Um, you know, we've had American Horror Story, Dead of Summer. Again, if you enjoy Dead of Summer, that's totally fine. I just, ah, man, I gave it to, you know, I, <laughs> God, I just did not care. If you like it, that's totally fine. I'm not going to bash you for it. Um, more power to you. Me, personally, man, I just did not care. Anyway, but Stranger Things made it all better. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, if you guys have seen Stranger Things, just comment below, let me know what you guys thought of it. Also, can we refrain from spoilers? Uh, I don't, again, I wanted to refrain from spoiling anything in this show, so can we all be just cool here and not spoil anything for the, from the show? <laughs> uh, don't mean to be mean or anything, I just don't want to ruin it for anyone who hasn't seen the show yet. Anyway, once again, just comment below, let me know what you guys thought of Stranger Things, and once again, hope you all enjoyed this review, and I will see you guys later.